Ada Box 12, Pi Gamer. Player 1, ready? This Ada Box will show you how to become your own video game creator with Make Code Arcade. No need to save your quarters up either. All you'll need is a computer with a web browser to use Microsoft's game creation engine. Learn about sprites, tile maps, and sound effects to craft your masterpiece. Then, run it on the Pi Gamer board for portable gameplay. Pi Gamer is our full-featured portable gaming platform. It features a color TFT display, analog joystick, buttons, speaker, headphone jack, SD card slot, as well as light and motion sensors. It's hackable. You can plug Stemma cables or feather wings to extend its capabilities. It's designed to work perfectly with Make Code Arcade. And you can also write games in CircuitPython, Arduino, or even run an emulator to play old 8-bit games of yore. This AdaBox is possible with the generous sponsorship and support from DigiKey. They made designing and shipping this box a breeze, thanks to how fast they ship our parts orders. We're so impressed with their accuracy and speed, we wrote a game in their honor. It's already included on the Pi Gamer. Try and see if you can pack purchase orders as well as they do. AdaBox 12, Pi Gamer. Hi, and welcome to the AdaBox 12 unboxing. I'm John Park for Adafruit Industries, and if you are a subscriber, then you've probably gotten your Adabox 12 in the mail by now, so you can play along while we check out the contents of the box. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe so that you'll get one next time. It's going to be good, I promise. A really interesting one. This Adabox is all about our new fully open source handheld gaming platform the Pi Gamer. So let's have a look and see what's inside the box. Opening up the shipping box, we've got our bubble wrap and there is the Adabox 12. Set that right there and before we go any further, don't forget to check inside the box under the bubble wrap because we have a couple of goodies in there as well. First of all, we've got an issue of Wireframe Magazine, which is lifting the lid on video games. This is a really cool magazine, which goes into a lot about the development and history and theory behind games, as well as info on current games. And uh, I think you might enjoy it. We've also got this really cool sticker sheet, which is a history of handheld games. So you can see it goes all the way from the 1979 Milton Bradley Microvision through a couple years later to the Nintendo Game Boy. You may have heard of that one. Uh, and all the way up through to the 2017 release of the Nintendo Switch with lots of interesting handhelds in between. So these are all individual stickers that you can use to adorn your notebook or a lunchbox or a game console, whatever you like really. All right, so we've got the Wireframe magazine and the very cool handheld gaming devices history sticker set. And now let's take a look at Adabox 12 and the contents itself. So I'm gonna take off the very cool die cut slip cover here. And you can see we've got our very cool custom Adabox 12 gaming themed sheet. And if I flip this around, you'll see you've got a description of the contents of the Adabox, as well as some helpful links with resources for learning how to code games on your Pi Gamer. And there's also a coupon code that you can use in the Adafruit store. Let's have a look at what's in the inner black box. Ooh, lots of good stuff. Let's take it out and then have a look at the individual contents, shall we? All right, set this over here. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the star of the show. This is the Adafruit Pi Gamer. And this is, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screen sticker there. 
This is our game development all in one open source board. It is fun to develop games for, and it's even more fun to play them, depending on the game, I guess. So what is this board? It is based on our favorite chip that we use these days, which is the AtSAM D51. You'll also notice we've got a 1.8 inch TFT display on here, which is gorgeous. The screen just looks beautiful. Now, our memory on here is pretty impressive. We've got 512K of flash, we have 192K of RAM, and we've got eight megs of QSPI flash for file storage, such as images or game assets or sound files. Turning the board over, you'll notice that we've got a few different ways to control your games. First of all, we have this really nice thumbstick. It's a bit of an upgrade from your typical D-pad. This is an analog dual potentiometer input, so it can detect motion in all directions. We've also got four buttons on the front here. We have a couple that you can use down here for things like select and start or getting to menus. And then we've got your A and B button for things like action and jump and shoot. Uh, now, let's also have a look at the backside here at a couple of interesting features. We have an SD card reader, which you can use to store even bigger game assets, for example. We have the on-off switch here to save battery power. We've also got a little reset button on there, which you'll use when you're loading games or need to get to the bootloader. Then you'll see to power it, we've got a JST connector here for a Live Poly battery, and it has the charging circuit built onto there, so you can charge over USB. Speaking of USB, you can use it to upload your games. That's how you'll plug it into the computer and get games coming over to it from things like Make Code Arcade, Arduino, or CircuitPython. Now we've also got a headphone out here so you can plug in and listen to stereo sound. Or if you want to listen to a speaker right on the board, we've got an amp circuit built onto here and so you can plug in a small speaker. More about that later. Now we've also got on here an accelerometer so you can detect things like tap or tilt or shake in your games. And speaking of sensors, we've also got a light sensor. It's actually on the back side of the board, but it's facing through this little hole here so you can adjust things in your game based on light sensing. Now, since you may have ideas for all kinds of interesting things that we've never thought of for your games, you may want to plug in additional hardware. And that's quite possible thanks to these feather headers that are built right onto the back to expose some of those pins that are on the chip, as well as three different Stemma connectors so you can plug things in like I squared C devices. All right, so that's the Pi Gamer itself. Let's have a look at the rest of the contents of the box. Some of this goes along particularly nicely with the Pi Gamer. For example, we have our acrylic case that you get to build yourself. So you'll get a number of pieces of laser cut acrylic, as well as the mounting hardware you need, these screws and nuts to attach that. And I've actually got a set that I already removed the backing paper from so that you can see that most of these are clear acrylic. Plus we have this smoked gray top that'll go on your Pi Gamer just like so. And actually once that's mounted, you're also gonna wanna fish out these little beauties from this bag. And that is the button caps. So these are a little set of 10. You get to pick the four that you want to use to go and snap right onto the buttons that are built onto the Pi Gamer. So we could take, for example, one of these red ones here and click that into place right onto the A button. So you'll get to decide how to put that together and uh, which buttons you want to choose once you've assembled that. Now, when you have it all assembled and you want to carry it around, we've got this really great soft case that is a gorgeous Adafruit purple. And it is a foam that gives you some protection but is still lightweight. And it zips up to protect the Pi Gamer. And you can also fit in there maybe a spare set of headphones and a USB cable if you like. So that's a little carry case. Uh, and then when we're going to be assembling this, we'll have our 350 milliamp hour Live Poly battery that has a little extra short 
cable on it so that will fit really nicely onto this little spot here reserved for your battery. And speaking of attaching things to the Pi Gamer, we've also got our little speaker. This is a little mini oval speaker with a short cable and that plugs right into the back there and it's got a little peel off uh, adhesive so that it will stick nicely to the board and it gives it a surprisingly loud sound. Let's see what else have we got. Well there's this really cool make code sticker for make code arcade and that is very appropriate because we're going to be doing a lot of game programming for the Pi Gamer using make code arcade. Now digging on into our bag a little further here we've got some cool uh, design supplies for you. We have this notebook which is peel that little wrapper off of there and so this is a nice little gridded notebook that you can use to design game levels or artwork and it'll allow you to stay within the pixel constraints of whatever it is you're designing. In fact I've been using one here uh, for things like calculating screen dimensions when I want to move things. I've, I've found that to be helpful as well as just designing some general little pixel art types of things. There's a Pac-Man for you uh, and game levels or puzzles things like that. So really cute notebook and you'll see it's got this elastic that goes around it and you'll assemble that just by simply pushing these through the little holes on the back and that'll snap it into place. Put that other one in there and then there's a couple little grooves on here. It's a really nicely designed notebook. So that can be your little companion for your game design exploits and to go along with it we have a little pack of colored markers. It comes in this really cool case and you can do all kinds of design in your notebook using those markers. Let's take a look now at how we assemble the acrylic case for the Pi Gamer. So to start off with we're gonna take the speaker and plug that into the little speaker port on the back of the Pi Gamer. Uh, it's a little tricky to get it quite right at first. It's just tiny. Uh, but when you get it lined up you'll see the red wire will be up towards the top and you can just press that in with a finger. And then I'm going to peel off the backing and you can press that to the board right where that silk screen indicates. You can leave this other white uh, tab in place. We don't need to use that adhesive. And next up is the battery. So same sort of thing. This will plug in only one way. And you just need to get that lined up and you'll feel when you get the little, uh, the two little prongs and that top. There we go. Just press that in. And now with the battery in place, uh, you can kind of fold the wire over a little so it fits. Just don't be too rough on those wires. And now what we'll do is we'll actually place the sort of clear spacer piece of acrylic onto the front of the Pi Gamer and then place the smoked acrylic top plate. And then we're going to feed the, uh, the screws through, all four of these through. And then we're going to flip this over so that we can then stack the remaining pieces on. There's probably a few different ways you can put this together but I've found this works pretty well. And now you want to hold all four, four screws and kind of carefully flip that upside down, place it on your workbench so that you don't lose any screws. And now we're going to place the spacers. There's two that go on either side and you'll can, you can see how the uh, alignment of those works with the longer piece towards the bottom. Oops, there we go. And just fit those over the screws and then place the other two. And this just gives us uh, sort of a cutout spacing for the important parts at the top and the bottom. 
uh, but gives us clearance for this back plate here, which has cutouts for the uh, two feather headers. And we can go ahead and start screwing in the nuts onto the back of those long screws. And I'm just gonna hold these screws in place so they don't pop out. And place that nut on there. And then this last one. And just finger tighten those, and there we go. The case is put together, and then you get to have the fun part of picking out which color buttons you want to put where. Uh, and those have little square uh, ends that register with the button caps. Just twist a little bit if you need to before popping it on. I'm going to go with a two red, two white color theme. There we go. Look at that beauty, ready to play. Now we've got our Pi Gamer with the enclosure on it, button, speaker, and battery. So why don't we fire it up and take a look at the default game that comes preloaded in your Adabox Pi Gamer. We'll flip that switch on. DigiKey and Adafruit present Order Shipper. I'm going to press A, and then we get the instructions on how to play. We have got to pack the orders into the boxes based on the components ordered on the left side. Oh, here comes a new order in for one resistor, three capacitors, and three diodes. All right, let's pick up a diode and a capacitor. Let's see, one resistor, I'll pick that one up. And now I've got two, one more, oops. Let's grab one capacitor from there. And one last diode. And my order is complete. So you can see that's a pretty fun little game and all of the Gameplay, sound, graphics, it's all created right inside of Make Code Arcade. And the best part is this is entirely open source, so you can download the code, you can pull it directly off of your Pi Gamer and into Make Code Arcade inside of the browser window, and then have a look at how it's made. And then you can modify it or uh, add new difficulty settings to it, change the graphics out, it's all up to you how to redesign or design from scratch any game that you can imagine. The Pi Gamer is a really capable board, and one way to look at some of these capabilities in sort of a raw data fashion is to upload the Pi Gamer test UF2 file that we have in the Pi Gamer learn guide. So I've got that loaded on here. And you'll see, when I turn this on, it runs through a quick color demo flashing the screen, turns on our NeoPixels in different colors down here at the bottom, uh, it tells us some diagnostics about our QSPI flash being okay, gives us a uh, accelerometer is okay, lets us know the X, Y, and Z values of the accelerometer, as well as the light sensor reading. As I cover that, it goes to a lower number. Let's me know the battery voltage, and you can see I'm able to press the different buttons and move the thumbstick and get a little on-screen update from those. It's also reading some of the uh, values off of the analog pins on the board, and you'll see I can also test the tap detection, get a little coin sound when I tap the board. Before we move on, let's just do a quick recap of what is in the box with Adabox 12. So we've got our Pi Gamer, the acrylic case and hardware, button caps to place on the buttons, little speaker, 
LiPoly battery, the soft-sided zipper case, gridded notebook, 12 colorful markers, the history of handheld game devices sticker sheet, make code arcade sticker, and the wireframe magazine. So that is Ada Box 12. You can tell we've got all kinds of really cool stuff in the box and even cooler stuff in store once you start exploring the learn guides and programming your own games. The Pi Gamer is absolutely a joy to play and it's tremendous to develop for. We've got some really cool demos of things that I'd like to show you coming up next. All sorts of things like NES emulators to gift players to games designed for other Arduino based consoles like Ardu Boy that we can run on the Pi Gamer, as well as original creations in Make Code Arcade. So stay tuned for that. For the unboxing section, that wraps it up. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been the Adabox 12 Pi Gamer unboxing. Let's go live. And uh, I want to say thank you for tuning in for that portion of the, uh, of the live stream, the pre-recorded part. Adabox 12, holy cow, this is a really, really great Adabox. Um, I've been having so much fun developing games on this. Uh, and I wanted to share with you some of the projects that we've built here in a second. Um, but first, let's just take a look uh, at the guide. So I'm going to hop over to my... Uh, browser here. And so this is the main guide for Adabox. And we've got um, an introduction to the box. We've got the unboxing, similar to what I just did. Um, you can see there, ooh, that's a different, you might get different markers, by the way. Uh, if, you, if you see there, there's a, there's a blue set with a zebra on it. I think it's probably the same markers, but uh, different cases at least. Um, and so the, uh, the guide has a whole bunch of different links on the side that'll take you through uh, the introduction to the Pi Gamer itself. So that'll show you things like adding a new bootloader um, to update it to a newer version that you might have shipped with, things like the pinouts for the hardware. Um, there's a, a page for how to build the case if that video wasn't uh, what you were looking for and you want to you see a, a photographed version with some words on it, that'll do. Um, and then we get into a whole bunch of fundamental guides for how to develop games. So these are uh, both general guides for um, the, es the essential parts of 2D games, uh, but then these also are specific for using MakeCode Arcade. So you could learn a lot from these, which you might then apply for other uh, methods if you're going to end up using things like uh, CircuitPython as that becomes uh, more robust for, for building games uh, or Arduino. But for now, we've got a lot of guides that'll take you through the basics and show you how to do stuff inside of Make Code Arcade. So here's how to create sprites in Make Code Arcade. We'll show you how to build um, 2D characters with the sprite editor that's built right in. Uh, but here you can see, here's a, a little fundamental section that goes into some history of sprites and some of the uh, resources out there, some uh, topics on color palettes, uh, and there's the, the paint canvas. And then you can see here we have some specifics um, as we build Ruby, our LED friend here, uh, for using the sprite editor right inside of Make Code Arcade. And then we move on to animation. So here you can see there's a Ruby moving around, except little legs are, are moving and the little eyes are, are shifting depending on the direction you're going. And again, this is uh, useful stuff for any game development environment, but we'll also go into the specifics of doing that inside of Make Code Arcade. Uh, then we take some of what we've just learned and apply that to doing a platformer game. So this is uh, a little bit about, again, the fundamentals of how platform games work, unlike our 
our uh, Space Invaders there, which is sort of a single screen. We're going to get into things that have long, huge screens, like uh, this Mario level right here. And we'll get then into using tile mapping to create a level that Ruby can move around on and uh, a little background, and we'll talk about how the camera can follow the character. Um, and then we'll start applying this to making our own games. So we have a, a few of these uh, sort of rem remake code arcade games, we call them. So here's Sparky Invaders, inspired by Space Invaders. Uh, here is our DigiKey game that you uh, saw me playing earlier, the DigiKey level, uh, sh level Shipper. And then we get uh, even a little more advanced. We're going to talk about things like importing graphics from other tools using some uh, the asset tool, um, creating our own custom color palettes if you don't want to use the default color palette that comes with Make Code Arcade. Uh, here's another remake. We do an arcade uh, uh, remake arcade for Arkanoid or Breakout. And Pi Hunter, similar to Spy Hunter. And then here's an original one. Actually, it's a little bit inspired by Rampage. Uh, and this is Trash Panda. And, of course, the sequel, the follow-up, Trash Panda 2, which is a different type of game. Um, and one thing, actually, before, before we move on, one thing I wanted to show you is I'm going to switch to um, my main screen black hole mode here for a second. Okay, hopefully the black hole has stopped. And you can see here, so... In this Chrome browser window, I have Make Code Arcade. And right now it's loaded up to the editor. Uh, I'm editing a game in this example, and I'm, I'm going to edit Ruby. Actually, I've got a custom color palette in there. Um, over here, these are game cartridges. So there's a really cool method, I think, that uh, Pico 8 developed first, which is embedding the game code into a PNG image file. So if you look at these, they're little, I think, maybe 160 by 120 uh, graphics. So it's a, it's a thumbnail of the game, but the game is actually embedded in it. So you can drag and drop these right into uh, the Make Code Arcade window and start editing them or go ahead and play them. So here you go. That's the example of the animation uh, and uh, scrolling background for that Ruby level. And I can go and play that in the simulator, load it up. Oh, something's missing. Oh, I think this is an earlier. <laughs> this is this is one of the in progress versions of it where there's no ground, um, and it's this easy. There we go. We drag in Arkanoid, and it'll load up in a second here. And there's Arkanoid. So I think that's really cool. And what you'll find is we have. Um, let me go back to my Firefox here for a second. Put you over there. Oh, uh-oh, is my Firefox not showing up? Oh, I bet there's people yelling at me in the chat that that's not showing up. Is it? Please tell me. Let's see. Uh, oh, no. Yeah? No? No. Okay. Well, why can't I see that? Can you guys see that right now? My Firefox seems to have gone haywire. Oh, there we go. It's wanting to be up front. Um, so... Sorry, I got derailed there. But all those examples of Make Code Arcade games, we include in the guide that little PNG file. So it's a really convenient way to share it with people, and you can download it and drag it right into the uh, Chrome browser when you have Make, Card Make Code Arcade up and uh, start editing or playing the game. Now we get into some other topics. So we aren't constrained to just use Make Code Arcade on the Pi Gamer. You can also uh, play Arduino-based games. So we have a system and a library called Arcada. And in Arcada, we've done uh, some ports. Lady Ada has ported over Arduboy. So it's quite straightforward to uh, recompile games that were Arduboy developed, which is an awesome little handheld that's, that's uh, Arduino based, and then play them inside of the Pi Gamer or the Pi Badge. Uh, same with Game Buino Meta. And I have an example of that I'll show in a second. Uh, and Lady Ada's been really busy because she also ported over an NES emulator. So if you have uh, some favorite games from the Nintendo Entertainment System, you can play them right on your Pi Gamer. And uh, this is a really cool project that Phil B created, which is using the Pi Gamer as a control pad for something over USB. And it puts a little joy face right in the middle, which is super cute, kind of meta. 
Uh, and this is a really cool one, the Arcada animated GIF display. I made a, uh, I'm actually going to show this on my live stream tomorrow on the Jump Parks Workshop, uh, how you specifically format your GIFs and get things ready so that you can play GIFs really smoothly, uh, really quick load times too, right on the Pi Gamer. And uh, CircuitPython is just starting to get online for use on the Pi Gamer. So we have the Stage library and uh, Microgame. And these are two um, libraries that will help you create games inside of CircuitPython. We have a few examples of things, uh, such as Davis Dell's Adventure Game uh, and this uh, Radomir Dupierski's Dupialski. Sorry, I can't say your name. Dupialski. Radomir Dopieralski, I hope I got that right, uh, has created uh, his stage library here. He's got this little demo with uh, some moving animated sprites and some text on a background. And uh, here's a cool Brent Rebell ported over a cursor library so that you can see a big cursor on screen, which is super cool. And of course, some crazy demos of, of how fast this chip is and how fast we can, we can uh, get the display to respond using this little sand demo. Uh, here's a cool one that Mike Barella ported over of like a jumpy, bouncy game. I forget what was the name. There was one on iPhone I played a lot, uh, but jumpy, bouncy, we'll call it. Bounce. And it's is also an accelerometer based one, so you can play it by just tilting the phone, or in this case, the Pi Gamer. Uh, also, there's a little bit of an advanced guide by Isaac Wellish on doing RAM, uh, ROM hacks for NES ROMs, and then you could then play those over on the Pi Gamer. So here's a uh, game of impossible burger time uh, with a cow instead of a chef and uh, vegetarian burgers. Uh, also really cool one, so the Ruiz brothers have made some great cases, snap fit cases for the Pi Gamer, as well as uh, figuring out this crank mechanism based on the, the notion that uh, the Playdate uh, console that was recently announced came up with of using a rotary encoder as a crank on your games. Uh, there's some snap fit cases. I have some to show you in a second. And look, if you go to the Learn uh, system and just type in Pi Gamer, you can see all of these great tutorials all live in one place. So you'll you'll find them in the main guide uh, for the uh, for this Ada box, but you'll also be able to just go into the Learn system and find them. Uh, so let's. Uh, I'm going to check in over with Discord to make sure no one's saying, "Hey, we can't hear you or see you." Oh, good. Uh, no panics so far. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the workbench and let's take a look at some of these in action. And let's see, let me bring up my... Oh, that one's not wanting to switch. Stand by. I have to do this the old-fashioned way and walk over there. Camera switcher forgot. Yep, sure enough. All right, so there is my little notebook, which I've started to put those stickers on. You can see we've got our cool make code sticker and then some of these from the sheet. Um, and now if I zoom this in a little bit, I have been busy with, I. I don't be jealous, but I have a lot of Pi Gamers because I've been testing a lot of things simultaneously. Um, so you've seen the, uh, the shipping game, and then I have a few others queued up here. So here's that demo, that mega demo, and actually uh, was really appreciative that Phil B has uploaded the uh, vector files for laser cutting the acrylic case. So you can do your own colors. I've used a uh, sort of a milky translucent white here for this um, Pi Gamer demo of all the joystick and buttons and things. And I think the LEDs look really cool through this one. So um, you, so someone asked this on the, on the chat earlier. If you want, you can plug in a uh, NeoPixel strip into one of these um, Stemma connectors. I believe we have some that terminate in that, or you could um, splice the wires yourself. But I, besides using the feather headers, you can also plug things into Stemma. So that may be a cool way to add things. Um, similar to, actually, there's a guide for this on uh, our previous one, the Pi Portal, on plugging in uh, NeoPixels there. Yeah, so I think we have a strip that'll plug right into that. Uh, so that's that demo. And then um, 
for the GIF player, here's another one where I laser cut a, a, a new case top. This I'm going to show in more detail tomorrow. But cool thing is, this actually, I'm using my SD card uh, for that. So there's a little, uh, not so little actually, I think that's a 16, no, it's an 8 gigabyte um, SD card. So I've loaded a bunch of GIFs in there, which are all a little less than a megabyte, I think, some even smaller than that. Um, and you'll see that they load off of that fast. They load even faster off of the QSPI, but you can see this is fast enough as I flick the joystick, it'll just go to the next one and they load. In fact, look how boom, 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 boom. That's how fast it's loading up these GIFs, which is really impressive. Um, and I'll talk tomorrow about formatting those. So uh, you've seen Trash Panda. And I'm a big fan, so I'm going to load that back up. And what I'd love to see is as people start using their uh, Pi Gamers is I'd love to see people add some levels to this and maybe some high scores and things like that. And even maybe multiplayer. You can decide how to throw the bricks at poor Lin there. Um, so that's Trash Panda. Check that one out. Um, and let's see. There were just a couple others I wanted to show here. Yeah, so I had... Um, this is a really good Tetris. It's also nice and loud. Metatris. And you can set your difficulty level if you're feeling bold. And you can hear that speaker is pretty nice. This is one of these beautiful cases that the Ruiz brothers sent me. Thank you for that. Uh, I love how it shows off the, the uh, silkscreen graphic in there. And I had shown uh, this a little bit during the video too. This is the RG Boy playing uh, our port of RG Boy Castle Boy, which is like a Castlevania type of game. And you can see we've made a little uh, sort of letterboxing of the screen, so it maintains the original dimensions of the OLED that's on uh, the RG Boy. And since someone just mentioned this, I'm going to show. Super Mario, and again, the sound is great on this, so let's see if this loads up, we should hear. A very familiar sound, and so you can not only just play these games that you love and are familiar with, but there's also new games being made uh, still for NES, and um, you can check out the ROM hacking guide that Isaac did if you want to modify your games and put uh, Link in there instead of Mario. Um, so let's see, that covers the demos and things. So I think that is going to pretty well conclude our live stream, but we've got uh, people in the chat. Um, so if you want to ask questions or uh, see if you can pry any info out of Lady Ada about future developments and ideas, please do. Um, and I'm going to hang around a little bit on the Discord if people want to ask questions then. But I want to thank everyone who showed up for the unboxing. And if you've got your Ada box, go have fun. Go make some games. Go play some games. Uh, and keep an eye out because Make Code Arcade is constantly... Uh, adding features and improving, and uh, you might want to check the forum.makecode.com in the arcade section to see what's going on over there, as well as we have a Make Code uh, channel in our Discord. And uh, I'm doing Game Picks of the Week, so there's always lots of uh, uh, new stuff to check out that's being posted. And um, I just want to remind you that if you enjoyed this, don't miss out on doing the next one. And if you forgot or somehow didn't subscribe to this one, you can still. You can now subscribe to 13, which is going to be a Halloween-based edition. Um, so thank you all so much for coming by. And for Adafruit Industries, this has been the Adabox 12 unboxing. I'm John Park, and I'll see you next time.